Welcome to the Tape Library. Tonight I have seven brand new, real life stories of the paranormal to share with you. Stories that for those who experience them, still haunt them to this day. An unexplained mystery inserted into their normal, everyday lives. All stories here are presented in the witness's own words. Where possible, I have linked to the original accounts in the description below if you want to learn more about an individual case. So dim the lights, grab yourself a hot drink, and get comfortable. It's time for another entry into the tape library. Case number one. I've recently been in touch with a paranormal investigator who has a whole host of stories that sound absolutely fascinating. I've got one to share with you tonight, but hopefully we'll be hearing more from them in the future. I was called by a lady who swore that her cat was possessed. I was incredibly sceptical, but very curious. According to the lady, her cat would suddenly start screaming at the top of its lungs. It would do this crazy looking slow motion walk while tilting its head at weird angles. If she tried to approach it when it did these things, it would lash out at her with its claws. After having one of these spells it would hide, but not relax. Its tail would swing wildly, and it would growl to itself for up to an hour. As strange as all of this sounded, I spoke to one of my teammates who was very sensitive. After hearing the story, she insisted that we investigate. We arrived at the residence at around 4.30pm. The lady gave us a tour of the house and introduced us to the cat. It was a standard 3x2 ranch style home and we found nothing creepy about it. The cat was cool, very affectionate and really took to my fellow investigator. She spent a couple of hours alone with the cat while I got the paperwork and formalities done with the lady. She invited us to investigate the home that night and she had a date. Then she worked the 11pm to 7am shift at the local hospital. She left for her date around 7.30pm, and we began our formal investigation. We moved room to room, asking questions in hope for an EVP, or at least a knock in response to a question. We had no activity until, at 11.30pm, the cat started screaming in the master bedroom. Upon entering the doorway, my partner grabbed my shoulder, stopping me and motioning finger to lip for me to be quiet and listen. It was hard with the cat screams. They made my hair stand on end. As we watched and listened, a shadow began to form in the corner of the room. There was a whisper coming from the shadow that was not recorded by our DVRs, and we could not understand what it said. The cat was irate, and it was scared and ready to fight so we witnessed the claims of the lady first hand, and they were exactly as she had described. My partner spoke very calmly to the shadow, saying, You are scaring the cat. I don't think you mean to, so if you leave this room and go into the bedroom across the hall, we will help you. We turned and entered the smaller bedroom, and sat quietly on the bed, waiting to see what would happen. A few moments later, my partner grabbed my arm and pointed at the doorway in the spare bathroom shared by the two smaller bedrooms. I could clearly see a humanoid shape with no features, but it was blacker than the dark. His teammate and I had worked together many times and had a routine that we followed. I told the entity that everything was okay. The cat's calm now and we want to know how we can help slowly moved through the doorway and slightly into the room. At that point I heard through my DVR the word Kitty. While recording I always plug in an earpiece so I can hear what is being recorded in real time. I asked if it was trying to pet the kitty and it stretched out its arm pointing toward the master bedroom where the cat was. I asked if it wanted to hurt the kitty and almost immediately heard a sigh and whimper. I asked again if it wanted to hurt the kitty, and stated that in order for us to help, it needed to answer. 
My partner told me a minute later that it answered. She sensed that it indicated that it only wanted to pet the cat. She also sensed that this was the spirit of an adolescent male, and she thought that in life he had some type of developmental issue. While we spoke, the entity seemed to sway slightly back and forth, but it did not go anywhere. It seemed that it was listening to our conversation. I once again spoke to it, saying that it had scared the cat, and if it wanted to pet it, then it would have to make friends with it. I explained that if it would just sit still and speak to the cat, that it would learn that you don't want to hurt it. Eventually the cat will come to you and let you pet it. A moment later, the cat appeared in the hallway doorway and sat down calmly. No one spoke or even moved, including the spirit. A few moments later, the cat joined us on the bed. I spoke to it calmly, and my partner scratched its neck and head. As I looked back up from the cat at the spirit, I noticed it was gone. We experienced nothing else that night, and locked up the house and left. Two days later, my teammate called me very excited. She had researched the property and found that a young man who had Down syndrome had died on the property when he had fallen out of a treehouse. We gathered our evidence and met the lady the following day. I played her all of the recordings of us talking to the spirit so that she would understand exactly what happened. When she heard me tell the spirit how to make friends with the cat, she began to cry. She told us that only that morning the cat was in the bed in the smaller bedroom. It was purring very loud and moving its head like someone was scratching it. If you enjoy these stories then please consider liking the video and subscribing. I'm putting out videos like this every week as well as occasional deep dives into more famous, unexplained topics. So I'd love to have you join our small community. Case 2 This happened a few years back. There hasn't been much activity in the house since. It was a quiet summer night in about 2015 or 14. My oldest brother claimed to have encountered this thing before with his girlfriend. It scared them both enough to where they were sitting outside the house, too scared to go back inside when I came back from the grocery store. The story goes as follows. In the basement, the only bedroom is set up with a bed facing the doorway. When this door is open, you can see outside to the living room downstairs. My oldest brother and his girlfriend were laying down on this bed together talking. He was facing the wall and she was facing towards the doorway. She looked up from their conversation to see a little girl watching them from the doorway. She was obviously scared, but not wanting to alarm my brother she didn't say anything. She looked up again, this time the girl was next to the bed. She had enough and wanted to get out of this house immediately. I've always looked at this story with scepticism, as I've never really encountered anything paranormal myself. Of course, until it was my turn. Fast forward to 2015 or 14, when this room was now in possession of a different brother of mine. We're both into art, and I liked to hang out in his room because he owned most of the art supplies and we turned it into a makeshift art studio when he wasn't sleeping of course. We had the door open and the light outside in the living room was turned off. I was sitting on his bed, working in a sketchbook, when I look up and see the dark outline of a little girl watching me from the doorway. I don't feel particularly threatened or in danger, just confused as to what I'm looking at. I know it's a girl because I can see her short hair stopping at the shoulders. She was also wearing a dress, though not long like a gown. She held her arms straight down, though slightly outwards, as if she was walking only moments before. 
the thing that struck me was that I couldn't see her face. I was trying to make sense of what was happening, just as my brother gets up in a hurry and closes the door. He then asks me, Did you see that too? To this day we still talk about what we both saw in the basement. It's been very quiet since. This is an older house built in the 1950s, with many different owners. I couldn't tell you what happened here as I don't know. Only that visitors often say they feel uneasy here, and that sometimes my dog behaves very strange. Maybe he sees things that I can't. I've always been open-minded to the paranormal, but not necessarily religious. I have a deep love for science, but I cannot explain to you what I saw that night. Case 3 Here's a little background context. So this past Thanksgiving was hard for my family. It was the first Thanksgiving without my biological grandmother. I called her Nana. Her life partner is my other grandmother, who I call Nanny. So now that I got that out of the way, on Thanksgiving night, me, Nanny, and my half-brother were sitting in the living room reminiscing on past Thanksgivings that we'd spent with Nana when we heard something fall in the master bedroom. Nanny had closed the door to keep the dogs out of there so no one and nothing was in there. We brushed it off and decided to put on a movie and were watching it when we heard voices coming from the room. We paused the movie to listen but couldn't quite make out what they were saying. We assumed it was just the neighbours, and were only about to continue the movie when we heard a voice call out for Nanny, in my Nana's voice, only it wasn't her. We all knew it. Again she called out, this time for me. This time the tone in her voice was urgent, like she was hurting. Help me, we heard her cry. My older brother, who's never really encountered nor cared for the supernatural, was shaking. He tried to get up when Nanny shouted, something she's never done. Don't open that door. Again we heard my Nana crying while pounding on the door. When at 11.52pm, it was quiet. That was the time she died. Till this day we haven't spoke of what happened. Nanny had me sage the entire house the next day. Do you have your own paranormal experience? Something you just can't explain? Then I'd love to chat to you. You can find my email address in the description if you want to share your story. Case 4 Growing up in a Hispanic household, you hear a lot about the paranormal, and mostly everyone has experienced something. I am no different. My parents brought their own home when I was around three, and ever since I've always felt or witnessed odd things. There are too many little incidents to bore you with them, but they all have one thing in common, and that is they all happen close by or in the hallway to that home. This event that I want to speak about tonight didn't actually happen there, but instead it happened in my home just last year. My mum passed away in 2020. Since 2001 she had dialysis three times a week at 5am and I was in my 20s and not married and lived with both my parents at the time. I would take her every time to her appointments. Whenever I did a late shift at work or would sleep in, she would walk to my door and say, I'm ready, we can go. I would get up and drive her. I'm now married with kids of my own and in my own house. Last year my wife had a scheduled outpatient surgery in the early morning. I was working in another state, but drove home the day before. I got home in the early hours of the morning and told my wife I was going to sleep on the couch for three hours till we had to leave. 
her wake-up alarm was about to ring. So with her eyes closed, she said, Okay. I was in a deep sleep that the three hours flew by like a wink. And then I clearly heard my mum say, I'm ready. We can go. I woke up and immediately realised what I had heard. I hear my wife open the restroom door and she walks over to me and says, Oh good, I was about to wake you. Till this day I know what I heard and I know that she is still around watching over me. It wasn't so much a scary incident, but definitely unexplained. Case number five. I moved to a town in Appalachia, and ever since I have heard voices calling me into the woods. My parents got divorced when I was 12, and my mum moved us into a small town in the Pennsylvania mountains. After a few months of living there, I went back to live with my dad in Texas. Ever since then though, I have heard the voices of people I know calling me into the woods. It's been almost eight years now. It's only when I'm alone, but not every time I'm alone. It seems to only happen in Texas. It's weird, but I never even considered that this was maybe something to be concerned about. Until recently. It was just something that happened. I even followed the voice once, and only thought it was kind of weird that I'd heard my dad screaming for me. He didn't actually call me, because I got home later and asked him about it. I don't know if this is related or not, but remembering it is what sparked this post. A few years later, I was about a mile out in the woods in Pennsylvania, when I zoned out for a minute. When I zoned back in, I heard a stick snap, and looked over to see a white-tailed doe staring at me from about ten-ish feet away. It looked almost as though it had been trying to sneak closer to me when I looked at it. I just sort of backed away from it and went back down the mountain. I'm not entirely sure what to make of this now, that I'm looking back on it all. The times that I just sort of brushed it all off as normal. Case number six. So a little background on myself. I'm a 20 year old female college student on break for the holidays. My parents took a short four day trip out of town. So me and my sister, who was 18, got stuck on dog sitting duty. We have three Cavalier King Charles Spaniel dogs, two females and one male, all in between the ages of one to two. The male named Cheese has an obsession with these rubber balls. Some background on this dog Cheese. His behaviour could be described as erratic and hyper. He's the type of dog to chase shadows, lights, flies, obsessively lick us, and just has always been a little more stranger than our other two dogs. In other words, he has very obsessive erratic behaviour. One of his obsessions is a specific type of rubber ball that he loves to squeeze in his mouth as it makes a squeaking sound. It is the only toy he has that he is majorly obsessed with. We have brought him a handful of these balls because they go missing occasionally, roll under furniture or get lost outside. After a certain amount of time, we put the balls up in a designated spot, a flower pot up on the mantel in Cheese's view, because if not, he would literally chew on this ball all night, or tear up the couch looking for it, if he does not see us put this ball away in the flower pot. This particular weekend, he has had the same ball the whole time, because we have kept it near for when he decides he wants it, or up in the flower pot for us to easily find when it's time to play. Typically the ball will roll under the couch in the living room multiple times while he's playing. We go through the same routine where he scratches at the floor to let us know the ball has rolled underneath. We are able to get the ball with a designated back scratcher, it is a long arm that extends that we use to specifically to recover his balls that have rolled under something. In addition, we use a flashlight to see the ball, because it is a dark area under the couch. All weekend, my sister and I have been retrieving this ball for him, as it is a normal occurrence in our house that the ball will roll under the couch. However, we only saw this single ball every time we went to retrieve it from under the couch. There were no other balls under the couch. 
We had not seen any of his other balls the entire weekend, just the one he had been playing with. The other handful of balls were unaccounted for. Last night, my sister and I put on a movie for the night around 9pm. Around an hour and a half into the movie, I look over and Cheese is acting, not like himself. He's acting extremely calm. Too calm for his normal erratic behaviour. Cutting the movie short, I carried him outside to go potty and just cuddled him all night because I knew the poor guy wasn't feeling good. I knew he just needed to sleep it off. Like I said, his ball is his favourite toy, so I took the ball and put it next to him as he slept, just to give him more comfort. I turned off the lights in the house and cleaned up the living room, and headed to bed with him and two other girl dogs, who were completely normal by the way. Cheese was the only one acting different. They are very attached dogs, so the girls sleep under the covers by my feet, and didn't move positions all night, as I do wake up during my sleep a few times occasionally, and can feel them still there. I would also check on Cheese, and he stayed put in the same position with his ball next to him all night. Now this is the unexplainable part. When I wake up, Cheese is completely back to his normal erratic self. I get up, grab his ball, and put it in my hoodie pocket to give to him after he's finished breakfast. He won't eat his food if he sees his ball. I walk out to the living room and on the floor right next to the couch, there are three of his balls in a triangle formation, sitting there. Remember, I was the last person in the living room last night after tidying it up, and there was nothing there. I go to my sister's room to ask her, Hey, did you find three of Cheese's balls and put them next to the couch last night? She responds, Um, no. We were the only two people in this house. So who found the extra balls? And why were they all gathered next to each other? I knew it couldn't have been one of the dogs because they were with me all night. Keep in mind there were no extra balls under the couch. And these balls were unaccounted for all weekend. So now I have four of these balls, including the one he had all weekend. Where did these extra balls come from? Who placed them there? I haven't seen another ball in days. I keep racking my mind, trying to think of a logical answer, but I cannot. This is truly unexplainable, and I'm creeped out. K7 this story comes from one of the tape library's most active listeners, Dawn Rowlands. Here she recounts several experiences she's had throughout the course of her life. The first strange experience I remember happened in 1974, when I was six, almost seven. I lived in Somerset, southwest England. My primary school had arranged a day trip to visit Longleat House, Wiltshire. My mum came along as an extra helper or chaperone to assist out the teacher. Longleat House is beautiful. It's an Elizabethan property in large grounds. There is a safari park so you can drive through and see all sorts of animals. During the tour of the house, mum noticed that I appeared to be watching something that she couldn't see. She asked me what I was looking at, and I said, The pretty lady in the grey dress. Mum couldn't see anyone, and no one had been walking through where I was looking. At the end of the tour, Mum asked one of the tour guides about what I'd said. Evidently, some people have seen what they refer to as the Grey Lady. It is thought to be the previous Lady Bath. Thankfully, Mum was, and still is, very accepting of strange things, due to my Nan seeing things too. Therefore, I was never made to feel different or stupid. That lady I saw was as clear and real as anyone else in that room, and I still remember her to this day, almost 50 years later. A few years after that experience at Longleat House, this happened. I was very close to my maternal grandmother, and stayed with her at weekends very often. She lived a few miles from us in a little village called Buckland Dirham. It's not too far away from Froome, South West England. I've never met my grandfather, as he died a few months before I was born. 
but I visited his grave in the village church with Nan quite regularly. The church is from the 12th century, with some newer add-ons. It's a beautiful, small village church, and very peaceful. One time, and it would have been around 9 or 10, I had gone for a little walk around the graveyard. There was a second large area of graves, and as I walked through into it, I saw a little girl. She was about seven or eight and had mid-brown hair, slightly curled down to her shoulders. She was wearing a pretty cream-coloured dress with a ribbon sash around the waist and tied in a bow at the back. She was wearing buckled shoes and white ankle socks. She walked from a memorial and then behind a gravestone and was gone. No sign of her. We went to look around together and there was no sign of her. A part of that area of the graveyard was called Tragedy Corner by the locals as it's where several babies and young children were buried. Another one happened more recently. It was during Covid and I had driven to the local shop. I now live on the Shropshire border. I parked in a little car park and was going to go get some cash. The car park is a rectangular shape and I'd reverse into the space I was facing the shop. As I got out of the car, I saw an elderly man wearing a tweed jacket and a cap, using a walking stick, walking quite slowly from my right towards the shop. He was about ten metres from me. I said good morning to him, and he smiled and replied the same. I walked up to the cash point and could hear him walking slowly towards me. I could hear the stones crunch under his feet, and the sound of his stick, he stopped about two and a half metres behind me, so I assumed he was waiting to get cash too. I got my money and as I turned around I said, I won't hold you up any longer, just to be polite. But there was no one there. No sign at all. There was nowhere he could have gone. He would have had to walk past me to go into the shop, but the door was just a couple of metres to my right and no one had passed. A very weird one, but he was very real. That's all for this entry. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Until next time, sweet dreams.